So, um... Ba -ba 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 -da. Yeah. Do -do -do -do. Everybody <laughs> get ready for a thing. Mid-year, Rudy Land. Top five, top best spectacular. As I, as I started singing, I forgot what I was singing about. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, so we're, uh, we're going to do our top five, top best of... Um, what we've seen on the what, on what, the reviews. What we've seen from the show, and I've also got some nice Rudy Land facts for us of the year. How many times um, I've said, "Hey gang!" <laughs> but uh, we've started this show on February eighth, twenty eighteen, and at the mid year point, we've seen twenty four films halfway through the year. We've seen twenty four. Yikes. 24. So, um... This is, the best ain't gonna be tough. It's no, the, the worst best, for me. It's the gonna best be tough. The best was easy for me to make the list. It yeah. was really easy. We made that one quick. The worst was tougher. So, do you wanna... Do you wanna start with worst or you wanna start with the best? Let's start with the best. Okay. Uh, how about we do two and two and then we'll do one, one and one. Okay. Uh, so for my fifth best movie of the year... Uh, I'm going to go with You Were Never Really Here. Ah. Um, really good, well-made film. Lynn Ramsey did a great job. Um, you know, Joaquin was great in it, cinematography. Uh, it's a real film. Yeah. A real, if you like real films. Got a very limited release. So, very surreal. Yeah, so a lot of people probably, you know, didn't get a chance to see it. But I'm pretty sure it's available, I think, on Blu-ray now. It might, Seriously? It might, it might be available on Blu-ray now, and I think it's available to rent on iTunes or something. At least, it should at least be on Amazon, because they, they either produced it or financed it yeah. or bought it after it was made. If you got Amazon Prime, I think it'll be coming to there, and definitely check that one out. So that's my five. Uh, for my number four, got to go with Action Point. Um, had so much fun with the movie. Uh, I think it's, I think, it, I think it's just a really good movie, you know, mm. as far as, you know, just, you know, funny slapsticky comedy. Um, you know, it's, it's harmless. It, it was shit all over by the critics, but, you know, I, I would definitely tell people to check that one out. That was, that was a lot of fun. Number five. In the age of wonder, oh wow! The dark crystal. <clears throat> a king lays dying, and a court fights for his crown. In a wise man's world, a wise man lay dying. That's all I have to say about Dark Crystal. Really, yeah. I realize it's kind of a cheat because it's an old movie, but I did see it in we, theaters. We did see it in theaters for the show this year. So, to, I mean, on a technicality, yeah, I guess. I think can, I'm uh, trying to look up all the movies I've seen, but I'm pretty sure some have disappeared. Really? I don't have Peter Rabbit here. That happened to me with uh, Justice League. It's the only mm -hmm. movie on there that doesn't show up. All right. Let's go number four. I really like. Glad to see you prepared. <laughs> I forgot. I've been um, run amok lately. <laughs> been wrangling. Let's go. See, I thought it'd be a lot easier for best of. <laughs> it is. There's really only two or three that I'm looking at where I'm like, yeah, that was a really good, really solid show. How about Action Point? Yeah, Action Point for number four. It's just, you know, it's not great, but it's a fun little movie. Yeah, it's definitely fun. Super, uh, doesn't take itself seriously, and it's just goofy. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's definitely a fun time. You know, Johnny Knoxville got hurt on it more than any other movie he's done. Which is uh, not surprising. <laughs> yeah, he's getting older. And uh, there's literally a, a great video on YouTube of him talking about all the injuries. Did you Did you watch it? I did not watch it yet. I he, forgot about he it. He literally popped his eyeball out of his socket and it was hanging down his face. <laughs> and it happened. He's a man who loves his friend. <laughs> it, happened, it happened to him multiple times. He went to the doctor. A doctor like put it back in and he was popping his eyeball back in. Every time he sneezed, it would pop out. Like, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> Fucking giant hospital is a badass, man. Yes. He's crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely check out Action Point, man. How about you? 
number All right. three. So number three, I'm going with Game Night. I loved fucking Game Night. I rewatched it since it's come out on Blu-ray. It's fucking great, man. Like it's it's so much fun. Uh, the original poster was shitty, and the movie has done well. It's it's made like 120 million almost. Um, and I'm sure it's like, it's doing really well, like in rentals, like it's like top five for the past few weeks. Um, it's, uh, it's just really fun. I love the chemistry of the whole class. Uh, just all the actors on it. It definitely recommend game night. It's yeah. I loved game night. And, uh, uh, the number two shouldn't be a shock to most people. Super Troopers 2. I fucking loved Super Troopers 2. It got shit on by every fucking critic. They all trashed it. The said critics it was garbage. Hated it? They fucking hated it. They think it's like wow. one of the worst movies ever made. I didn't see that coming. And yeah, I mean, they didn't like the first one. And I'm telling you, man, I don't get it. Like, it's so funny. It's enjoyable. Well, is it like Kubrick sort of thing where at first they didn't like it, but then later they sort of turned? Or if they, is the consensus that it sucks critically? I, they, they just hated everything about it. They think it sucks. The filmmaking's terrible. It's not funny. And I don't see how you could ever say that movie's not funny. Like, that movie is fucking funny. Yeah. And, you know, I guess if you're a fucking prude with a stick up your ass and you can't enjoy shit, I feel, I feel sorry for you. Because, yeah. you know... It's bottom of the barrel humor. I know that. But it's they also humor. know that. And yeah, they like, put that in mind as yeah, they're making like, it. Like, what are you thinking? What do you think this is? You know, it's bottom of the barrel humor. And had a, I had, had a blast. It was it's it was probably the best theater experience I had this year. Like, I had so much fun watching it. It was packed and nobody talked the entire no, time. Every, Everybody just oh, left. It was beautiful. It really was. A great experience. Loved it. <laughs> So, uh, give me your, uh, your three and two. Super Troopers 2 is number three. Yeah. Uh, same thing. Great experience. I knew it wasn't going to be, like, <laughs> I don't know, a, who's a Wes there. Anderson movie? Yeah. It's I just, thought it was just, I just knew winner. it was going to be silly and goofy and trying to be funny, and it was. And again, great theater experience. Nobody was a dick. Everybody was just laughing, having a good time. Yeah. Everyone was on the same page in the movie, and it was it, that was beautiful, you know. Now that I tell you number two, you will be able to decipher our number ones if you're fans I mean, you're pretty easily. <laughs> number two for me, you were never really here. Oh wow, Joaquin Phoenix. He told me going in, it's like Taxi Driver. I it's. Still, the plot is like Taxi Driver. I really like it, though. The violence... Well, the sort of lack of lack thereof violence, like alluded to. It's it's hidden, for the most part. They don't really... Except for one scene the, in particular. The surreal, yeah. subtextual stuff I really like. Like, at the end, he fucking... Never mind. Yeah, I yeah, don't, don't want to give that one away. Let people um, see it. When his mother dies, that was really powerful. Yeah, the, the score by Johnny Greenwood, so great. It was naturalistic, but naturalistic to New York City. Yeah. Like, you know, railways and shit. Yeah, it, it feels real. It really does feel real. It's a very well-crafted film. I'm excited for Lynn Ramsey, uh, Ramsey's next movie, for sure. You know, I'm, I'm Do you know what it is? No, I don't. I, I'm just okay. saying, like, I'm excited for what she does next. On my note of this. game night, it wasn't dark enough. <laughs> Too cliche, too much cliche, too Watch much generic. If you want to. <laughs> but what right, uh, time for uh, your number one? Time for the number one, and we can do, I guess, a co-number one because I think I know what yours is. Oh yeah, the death of motherfucking Stalin. Um, um, do continue. <laughs> uh, I absolutely loved the death of Stalin. It was just, it was Whimsical. incredible. Whimsical. It was so fucking good. And, you know, it's. And that was a bad, not uh, a bad theater experience. People one talking person. and stuff, but yeah, one it person. was a bad experience in that nobody's getting it. But us. But the, I, I was fine with that because I knew I wasn't crazy, you know, and yeah. because you were laughing. It's 
it's just really dark comedy. Um, you want to talk about genocide? Let's talk about genocide. <laughs> yeah. um, just beautifully shot, you know, just whole movie filled with scene stealing character actors. It, it was a joy, man. It was it was incredible, and uh, it was a case where critics were stuck in the deck of the movie. I was never going to see this movie, but I listened to Mark Maron's podcast, and he had a uh, a commercial on for it, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have to check this out. And I saw a preview. Man, I'll tell you, it was it was fantastic. I really loved it, and and I really I really want people to see it. Don't sleep on it. Check it out. It's not too high. If it's not on Blu-ray or DVD now yeah, or digital, definitely. it will be in a week or two. Yeah, definitely. Please, people, check check out the Death of Stalin. It's fantastic. It's a trag It's a tragic farce. Yeah. It's two things that should not go together, but it <laughs> it goes together. I don't want to say perfectly, but really, really fucking well. I, I loved it. I did as well. <laughs> now. You have it on your top five. I know. <laughs> it's shocking. Jesus. My number one. Truth or dare. Truth or dare. No, wow. I'm kidding. It's Death of Stalin. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It wouldn't have been shocked. Seriously, <laughs> that movie fucking sucked. We had a good time in well, the theater. Okay, I mean, we had a good time. All right, never mind. The number one is Gabrielle Union's ass in Breaking In. Incredible, delightful. I'm doing the unrated director's cut, you get more of that ass. I hope so. God, I hope so. Yeah. Death of Stalin is the real number one. Um, yeah. It's like I said, just two things that shouldn't go together, but do. It's a tragedy. It's a comedy. What is that? Comedy and drama, comedy and tragedy. Uh, dra uh, tragedy or comedy tragedy. It's just two polar opposites that work perfectly, yeah. and at the end, you're like, "That was really funny, but oh shit." Yeah, I mean, it's, what did what happened while we were watching it's that? You genocide know, genocide and fucking World War Two and just infighting, most, political infighting oh, and murder. It's we're talking shit. about communism. Yeah. during Stalin's and death, they make it hysterical. They yeah. make it. I mean, dynamite shoot. cast: Steve Buscemi, Jeffrey Tambor, uh, this old English guy. Jason I don't know who Isaacs, he is. Who plays the general? Jason Isaacs was uh, again delightful. Oh, him and all of his medals on his chest. <laughs> Just the ultimate auto. Oh, I'm the man. Auto oh, fuck and, around. Uh, and he told me Rupert Friend, who plays Stalin's son, who is fantastic. A great scene in the morgue with him. You okay? <laughs> yeah, just fantastic. Fucking fantastic. Incredible. Yeah. Loved it. So now do you want to get into the shit show, huh? The shit show of 2018. Let's begin. The top five worst. I'll start um, it off. Oh, we'll mix it up, oh, okay? Wow. We'll, um, okay. I, d I didn't know if you had your picture. right. <laughs> I don't, but I have one okay. in particular I All need right. to speak of. Red Sparrow. Oh, wow. Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, this is exciting. She was very sexy in it, but the movie was fucking awful. <laughs> I, 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 you, you give, you give me previews saying, okay, spy thriller, like, think this, think that. No, it's that generic shit you've seen before. Yeah. It's about the commie, commies having a uh, secret sect of sex spies to Horror. They dispatch. Horror school. <laughs> magic pussy. Do you yeah. teach them how to have the magic pussy? <laughs> Awful, dreadful. Yeah. They ruined. I don't want to say Jennifer Lawrence is a good or a bad actress, but she's she very, could do, she could do a good. I feel like she could do a good spy thriller. She could play like, oh, yeah, I'm frantic. She pretty she, well. She should have never done the accent first. She's a very limited actress. She can do things, but she's very limited in my opinion. double hashtag double O agent double O titties. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's that was rough. And uh, as I think about it more and more that movie was really bad it was super long too and, and it was we, like two two and a half hours yeah, i think we both gave it a five <laughs> see there's ones on here that i know are super bad but i'm not going to put on here like hurricane heist was super bad but i knew it was going to yeah. be super bad and it had some humorous can't moments. give away my list but uh yeah fair enough <laughs> uh we'll go one. how about the next one we'll go beirut Another one where they could have made a good movie, but they decided 
to not do so. Mm. Utterly awful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Everybody, none of the actors fucking cared. Mm -hmm. None of the writers or direct director fucking cared. Mm -hmm. None of the producers cared. It was fucking stupid. Yeah, I can't... Uh... That, that one might uh, pop up uh, for me, too. Let's see it again. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So, uh, for me, for number five, I gotta go blockers. Okay. The, more, the more I think about it, you know, it was... I forgot much it, of it. it. It was shit. The I mean, Indian girl helped, yeah, helped yeah, the a Indian, lot. The Indian girl was nice. There's a couple moments that were funny with John Cena, but just shot like a fucking sitcom, like we said. Just looked like shit annoying uh just just pandering sjw bullshit mm. and uh shitty comedy wasn't a fan of it really uh that one was a bummer and our discussion on it we, we talked about it for like 15 minutes and our and the episode was like an hour and a half long we just went off and talked about something else it just shows you how much we didn't like it yeah Um, and then for number four, I gotta go with it. Most disappointing movie of the year. Massive letdown. Fucking hated it. Annihilation. Yeah. Fuck all you critics. Have you revisited it? No, and I'm not gonna. I fucking hated that movie. Okay. I stand by everything I said. People are fucking crazy. I have yet to rewatch it. I'd like to the, at some point. The dialogue was fucking atrocious. The acting was atrocious. It was so fucking bad, and I am embarrassed. I'm embarrassed by these fucking critics who are praising the acting in this movie. Jennifer, uh, Jason Lee. Is that just it, or are they praising, like, at least it's a sort of thought-provoking film? At least you have to think about the, things. They, they're, they're praising everything about it. Okay. Like, and it, it blows my mind. Like, you know, Genesis Rodriguez is just like... She's a, a piss-poor uh, Vasquez from Aliens, you know? It's just... Isn't she the girl who had the ass from... True Detective season two? No, no. Genesis Rodriguez is different from the. Well, I can't remember who I said. It's okay. I, I do continue. Yeah. I'm Annihilation. Fucked up. But yeah, yeah. Annihilation. Uh, just I, I hated it. I hated it. I, I, it was so disappointing. And I've noticed the trend that people who really loved Ex Machina, Alex Garland's first film. They did just not saw. like Annihilation. Yeah. And the people who hated Ex Machina, or it didn't work for them, have really liked Annihilation. It's really weird. Really weird split. It's a very divisive movie. The thing about Annihilation I is, like I at least... I want to revisit it because I like that it sort of asked you to think about certain things. It asked yeah. you to take in the whole picture. I like a movie that at least asks you to do some yeah. work, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not just all shit. I don't know. It was it was pretty pretty obvious to me. It was spelled out. Like I said, I, I said it was fake deep, but you know that'll be that. We talked about it. Mm. It's a good episode. So you're number five. What do you? Number five. I mean, five. No, you're number three. Number three. Number three. Um, number three. Let's go. Ready Player One. <laughs> I hated I figured, it. I, I hated it more. I hated it more and more as it went on. Yeah, you were really miserable on uh, Ready Player One. You just referencing stuff isn't funny and it isn't exciting to me. Fucking do something. You're a self, man. Yeah. You're a self. <laughs> you're That's a self. Bill Self's daughter, by the way. Don't harass her online. She has enough problems. She's allergic to meat. Uh -huh. I definitely think it would have helped, like I said, if I had told you that it was going to be reference filled. I think that would have made it better, but... Probably, but other than that, was it a good movie? Let's take the references out of it. Was it good other than that for you? I mean, I had fun with it. It was mm -hmm. a one-time watch. I really liked, you know, a couple of the set pieces. Um, it's definitely something, the more I think about it, you know, the worse it gets. But uh, as just a fun <laughs> blockbuster kind of, you know, mindless movie... You know, I mean, I knew what I was getting into, man. <coughs> you know, and, and, you know, I had a decent time with it. I just hate the celebration of nerd culture. Yeah, absolutely. The pandering uh, is getting bad. I don't, I, I'm trying to think of another movie we saw that was here that was just 
complete pandering, but uh, I think we saw something else that was just all pander. But you know, that's that's what the movie is. You know, it's references. That was the main plot of the book that came out years ago. So mm. you know, it was perfect timing for the studio to put it out. You know, so we live in a whore house, but she's a Jew. She works on the Sabbath. She goes with Romans on the Sabbath. She broke Moses' law. She dies. Da 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 da. My number two. Yeah. <laughs> Jurassic World, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. Well, How the trumpets well. of doom have sounded on Hollywood's trademark tent pole arena. God damn, what a fucking stupid movie. Preach. You don't, Preach. You don't have to be smart, <laughs> but just don't make logical mistakes that I notice, mm. and I'm not, like, really deep into the movie. I know it's going to be shit, and I'm not really paying that much attention. And it's like, <laughs> why the fuck are we on the mansion? Why the fuck is the dinosaurs being delivered to the mansion where the guy lives? Yeah, why are they uh, being sold for so cheap? <laughs> Why uh, are they um, being uh, bred to <laughs> attack people with lasers? Why, why are the orig why are non mutated <laughs> dinosaurs good, but mutated ones the bad ones? Yeah, it's 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 an allegory. Dinosaurs are fucking scary. Dinosaurs yeah. are good. Like I like some of the sort of horror-y stuff that went on when the alien when it turned into alien or something. It wasn't really scary though. It wasn't scary, but I liked. You know, it was nicer. Yeah, they, it's. It, as we've said in our review, you know, just like you get, you're, you were given 170 million dollars. The last movie made 1.6 billion, one of the highest-grossing movies of all time, and this is the best you can do. Like you've got years in between. This is the best. It was, the best it fucking, was script you fucking got. awful. Yeah, fucking dreadful, as Gordon Ramsay would say. All right, piss poor, <laughs> potluck dinner. It's raw. It's raw. Fucking raw. <laughs> You should be ashamed, mate. You shouldn't be a chef. I sort of went Australian there. Yeah, you did. I'm sorry, guy. I'm Gordon Ramsay. I officially apologize. Uh, I love your work. I loved Kitchen Nightmares. Keep I'm doing what you're going. doing. But uh, apparently, I mean, all of them free on YouTube. Kitchen FYI. Nightmares. I'll tell you the original series in that England? was in the UK. Fantastic. They just played totally on different. BBC America. Great, great. I'm going off a side note, but yeah. Um, my, uh, number three. Alan got, Iverson. <laughs> my number three, I gotta do it. It was a kid's movie that we saw. Oh, I forgot about it. It wasn't too fun. It was our second review. Peter fucking First Rabbit. review. No, I, Tanya was our first review. Oh, you're right. Peter Rabbit. I forgot about, they deleted I, Tanya too. I forgot about <laughs> that. Yeah, uh, Peter Rabbit just. Movie Pass, stop deleting movies off my history, please. <laughs> How can I remember if you delete them? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's uh, just a piece of shit. Terrible kids movie. Uh, another one that people are defending for some reason. Like, Seriously? Baffling. A carrot, a, a, a <laughs> bunny sodomizes an old man with a carrot right before he dies. <laughs> yeah. What, and, what, what, do, what, do you, what do you want yeah, more? And that's the best scene in the movie. But yeah, just terribly shot. Like, uh, you know, just, it looks so bad. The acting's terrible. And the allergy thing was fucking stupid. I didn't yeah, even care. It, like, was never, it was, like, two seconds. Oh, that's why people were mad about that? And they even reference it in the movie. Like, fucking idiots. They literally reference it in the movie. Like, literally, Peter Rabbit goes, yeah. I hope people don't get letters about this, or I hope... People don't send us letters yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, just absolute piece of Who's, shit. What's the name of the girl who was in it? Uh, Rose... Rose Byrne. Byrne. Rose Byrne. And she... I like Rose Byrne, but man, she was fucking annoying. Well, she was like a cartoon character in it. And Damo Gleeson. Oh like God, a cartoon character in he it. He looked terrible, too. It was like, who did the fucking makeup? I liked him. He looked better but, as uh, General Whatever. Uh, made a shitload of money. We're going to get a sequel. Seriously? Made a shitload of like $350 it's million. It's the Paddington disease. Paddington made money. Paddington's good, People though. want English misadventures yeah. and then the problem is like somebody english wrote and directed paddington and somebody who made the fucking uh mila kunis justin timberlake joint made fucking peter rabbit so friends yeah. with benefits yeah, or whatever it was benefits. called yeah so um 
my number uh, my number two, same as your number two, Jurassic World falling shit in the toilet. You know, just absolute piece of shit. Just fucking awful. So bad. Miserable. I was miserable in the movie. It's boring, just tedious. Two and Nothing a half hours happens. long. Yeah, it's actually only two hours and three minutes. Two hours and three felt, minutes. Felt we three spend hours. an hour in a mansion. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's so a vi- The villain terrible. had a fucking, had a lisp. And it wasn't <laughs> creepy. He wasn't it's, supposed yeah. to be creepy. I know, fucking, and, and even like Toby Jones with his fucking fake teeth. And it's just like everything about that movie I hated. It was just, it was it just was a awful. piece of shit. A piece of fucking shit. I usually, like, when people say they ruined my childhood, when they talk about Star Wars and stuff, right. I'm like, come on, get over it. They didn't ruin my childhood, but they took a franchise that could be good, oh, and they made it Took a shit, shit all over it. Yeah, and it's funny. It's funny that, because uh, I guess Jurassic Park 3, the first three movies, I think, just got put on Netflix, and it made me want to watch, rewatch Jurassic World, uh, Jurassic Park 3, because I'm like, this has to be fucking worse than Jurassic Park 3. Honestly, I do not believe that this is not the worst Jurassic movie. Like, it is fucking awful. Did you watch it? No, I haven't watched it yet. It just, it just came out. The second one, I watched ago. a uh, Red Letter Media. I watched their review on Jurassic World. The, the first, first half. Yeah. No, the first half of Jurassic World mirrors the second Jurassic Park, like, incredibly closely. It's, it's really Fallen bizarre. Kingdom. Yeah. Yeah, Fallen Kingdom is trying to like remake Lost World, which was weird. We didn't bring that up. Lost World kind of I didn't notice it I didn't or I didn't Lost really World, uh, It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. Would you say? It yeah. was okay. Once again, it's one I got to rewatch. The first one, the, you only see full-size big dinosaurs like in four or five shots. The rest of his necks. It's more about the raptors and in the, the Lost raptors World. too. Which is what they show. Or I'm talking about. about the first one, Jurassic Park, the original. Yeah. But do continue about the second one, the Raptor. Yeah, no, uh, just awful. The, the gymnast girl. Oh, just the, the the diversity side characters that are fucking awful. Uh, especially the fucking girl, the science girl. Like, no, I ain't giving you that Raptor blood. Another like, thing oh that the Red Letter off. Media review revealed to me, which I didn't notice. She's like, when uh, the army guy... Buffalo Bill is like, come with me now, or get down, or get away, or whatever. Right. I can handle myself, just because right. I'm a woman. And then later calls Chris Evans, Chris Pratt, Beefcake. Hey, yeah, beefcake, beefcake, come here. Yeah. Reverse sexism. Yeah. <laughs> there is no, another thing, there's no such thing as reverse sexism or reverse <laughs> racism. There's only yeah, sexism and racism yeah. for you fucking idiots out there who believe in such nonsense. Well, some people view it as only one for one person. That's... Please take that out of my ass. I want you on the bed now. Because... Number one. I know it's kind of a cheat because we didn't see it together. Oh. Guillermo del Toro's oh, Shape of Water. I wasn't God. expecting much, but I have never been more disappointed in an Oscar winning film. I saw The Last Emperor. Okay? I saw it. It wasn't great. It was kind of boring. It won an Oscar for Best Picture. Shape of Water won the Best Picture Oscar. It's a movie about a woman who falls in love with and fucks a fish monster. What else do I have to say? I don't need to say anything else, ladies and gentlemen. I believe the courts should side in my favor without a defense even being heard. A lot of people love it. Um, yeah, I uh, listen. I, it had. I, I understand what you're saying. It had good cinematography. The music was good. But Michael Shannon it's, was great. I thought he was It's fantastic. a movie about a woman, a woman fucking a fish monster. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's it's about interracial relationships. That's what, so that's a black why. man or a black man is like uh, a fish well, monster. Is Hispanic, so a Hispanic man is like a fish monster. Yep, I, I guess that's what Guillermo del, del Toro that's believes. That's the way he feels, you know. I believe that black people, white people, we're all people, yeah. not fish monsters. <laughs> But uh, yeah, spreading I, racism and intolerance since the mid '90s. That's, that's Guillermo what del the movie's Toro. about, and it's very ham-fisted to me. Uh, yeah. Wasn't a fan of it. Um, the gay guy. Yeah, Richard Jenkins was fucking awful in that movie. It was it was embarrassing. I was like, this is like the most stereotypical gay dude I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Like it was awful. Like gay people. You get f- out of here, Mister. 
Yeah, gay people should laugh at that performance, but gay uh, people should feel. I if I was gay, I would feel fucking offended. shame. I'd be like, offended by it. Yeah, it was it was pretty awful. <laughs> but uh, my, to close out the night, my number, number one, one from Gerard. My number one. Uh, it shouldn't come as any shock to anyone if you saw the review, if you heard it. Beiru. The worst fucking piece of shit I've seen <laughs> this fucking year. My God. What a horrific piece of shit. Um, like you said, acting, awful. Shaky fucking cinematography through the whole fucking movie. Just a disaster on every level. And... Unmitigated. Oh, it, it was it was awful. And, you know... Maybe, as we said, if the movie was actually made during the 90s and they, the movie wasn't digitally edited, to it, fucking wouldn't help. Have, it wouldn't have been good, but at it least would have been would have helped. a nice little action movie. Like, uh, yeah. what's that one where Jean Claude Van Damme's stuck in a, a hockey rink? <laughs> Sudden Death. Sudden Death. It's not a great movie, but it's yeah, not it's bad. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Love Sudden Death. Um, but, uh, yeah, just massive fucking just piece of shit. Like, awful. And that has. Like uh, an eighty percent of Rotten Tomatoes right now. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're a critic, that is an eighty percent still. Yes, you should be a fucking shame to yourself if you think that's. Beirut a good movie. has better review ratings than Super Troopers yes. and Super Troopers Two. Yeah, almost combined. I was gonna say that. Yeah. Is it combined? Yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ! What uh, the fuck is wrong yeah, with America? I'm gonna tell you, like you literally do not understand filmmaking if you think that's a good movie. You you on a fundamental level, you can't. Like you, you have no idea what you're fucking. Everybody's about. entitled to their opinion, but it it really was a shit, oh, I, shitty, that, I, shit, shit movie. Yeah, that, that's where I'm gonna disagree because camera work, like that is fucking trash. Like, yeah. That is just trash. Um, and maybe the they editing, thought it was an artistic, I artistic uh, opinion. Like, you know what I, mean? I, I for, as far as the editing and the, the the way the movie shot, I just can't. I can't get fucking down with that. I just can't fucking get down with that. So yeah, Beirut. Miserable, miserable dreadful. piece of Fucking shit. dreadful. He's looking for home. He's looking for home. So now let's get into the a more something delightful. I was gonna uh, do I was gonna do recommendations for Hollywood, but do uh, continue. I've got uh, some Rudy Land facts here. Oh yeah, the facts. Um, the so facts of life. I've got the highest score both of us have given. It's an eight for something. Yes. You you gave You Were Never Really Here an eight. So that was the highest score. I gave The Death of Stalin and Super Troopers 2 an eight. Loved those movies. And it's it's been a pretty good year for comedy for me. Yeah. Like I've I've really liked four movies. Four of my I, top five. Most years I get one or none. Yeah. This year I've gotten two, three yeah. great well, two great comedies, one pretty solid one, at yeah. least. Game night, it was okay. Not as bad what, what as about action point. No, that's what I'm talking about. That's why I said two really great ones and one good one. Pretty good one. That's action Stalin, point. Super Troopers, Action Point, Game Night. Four. Yeah, Game Night is okay to me. Didn't go far enough. So three, for me. then. It three had some fun. You liked Action Point, though, right? Yeah. yeah so it was pretty three, good. Yeah. Two really good ones. Death of, would you agree that Death of Stalin and uh, Super Troopers 2 were a little level above Action Point? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Way, way above. There we go. Way All above, right. yeah. Two really good ones, you know, and 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 I and I really liked Game Night. I thought Game Night was really good, but uh, and then for the lowest scores. Uh, I gave Beirut a two. It's the lowest score I've given, and I stand by that. That thing is a piece of shit. I wanted to give it a zero. That's how fucking bad it was. Uh, and your lowest was breaking in. You gave it a three. Not enough was, ass shots. Yeah. I was incredibly upset, as you yeah, all that remember. Was, uh, that was terrible. And then, uh, score most given. Score most given? Yeah. I, oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I was really confused. I'm kind of an <laughs> idiot, folks. I apologize. I uh, 
I gave six movies. I mean, I gave seven movies a six. So okay. I've given I've given a six out seven times. You've given a four out eight times. I am hard to please. <laughs> yeah. I'm tired of Hollywood's. I'm um, tired of this shit, and I'm not gonna fucking take it anymore. Yeah. So we've seen 24 films together, and uh, we've given the same score seven times. That's yeah, not seven surprising. Times, yeah. What films? Do you uh, know? Uh, it was um, Deadpool 2. Uh, oh, what? Uh, Red Sparrow, that was another one, and and, a, and like I said, a few others. But yeah. um, uh, the biggest hit we saw, as far as box office... Deadpool 2, no, or Jurassic, Jurassic World. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. <laughs> it's almost that a fucking billion dollars. Like what are we, t- are we talking domestic? Talking or? worldwide. Yeah, worldwide. but how are we doing domestic? Do you know that, or is it just saying how much we made d- all together? Uh, domestically, it's made like uh, two hundred something million right now. So Deadpool is over three hundred. So domestically, Deadpool's made two. Domestically, made there's most. gonna be plenty of people who see it just because it's Jurassic it'll, it'll Park. It'll surpass Deadpool too for sure. Um, Probably. Yeah, it's. And I didn't even really like Deadpool two that much. Honestly. Yeah, it was okay. It was it was whatever. But uh, the biggest flop we saw, as far as box office, sad to say, it was on both our top fives. Can you guess it? Death of Stalin. No, that, I'm talking Su- wide release only. Super so, Troopers 2? No, Super Troopers 2 did okay. Oh, you were never really here? That's not no, wide not release, wide though. not wide release. Action Point. Huh. It only made five million bucks worldwide. It's a shame. Yeah, really sad. I watched another internet reviewer's review of it, and they fucking... Trashed it? Trashed it. And then another movie we saw previously, they praised, which we hated. Yeah. Um, hey, teach. Listen. Everybody's got an opinion, and you can have it. Yeah, and uh, so for for the last two, they won't let me in the big people library downtown. There was some unpleasantness. I can never go back. I uh, I'm doing uh, best and worst movie of 2018 that we uh, didn't see for the show. Didn't see for the show. So for. Uh, so for me, the worst movie of 2018 that I did not see for the show was the 1517 to Paris. I saw that in the theater, <laughs> and directed by Clint Eastwood, okay, by motherfucking Clint Eastwood, filled with non-actors, uh, based on a real event that happened, a hijacking of a train in Paris, and that is the only good section which lasts about the 30 seconds. The whole hijacking lasts for like a minute. And there's literally like a five minute sequence in the movie where the main characters get gelato in a fucking place. Oh. It, it's, it's fucking horrifically awful. It starts off, I thought it was a comedy. Yeah. You have Tom Lennon in it as a principal at high school. And I was Jesus. like, it's so fucking bad that you should see it. It, it was like needs when to he was the doctor in Dark Knight Returns. <laughs> it should be studied. It's that fucking horrible. And not good horrible. I mean, like, yes. you need to see this to process this in your brain. That's how fucking bad it is. A multiple Academy Award winning director, <laughs> Clint Eastwood, has made the worst film of his fucking career. <laughs> It's awful. Okay. 94 minutes I did long. not see it, and I am happy I did not. Steaming pile of shit. So, uh, worst movie of, of this year that I'm you I'm going to cheat again. Oh, boy. Shape of Water. Yet again. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I flip the script on you guys. I do what I want. Rudy <laughs> Land makes the rules. Get with it or get whipped. Make it whip. I already said everything already I got to say. Got it's to fucking say. awful. If you think it's a good movie, I get it. Everything's put together well. But it's about a woman trying to fuck a fish monster. <laughs> Do, am I really the one that has to be telling you this? <laughs> you really got to get your life in check if I'm the one who's telling you this. You shouldn't <laughs> praise a fucking fish monster. A fucking fish monster represents black people. Asshole. <laughs> Make fucking Spanish films again, you fuck. Yeah. You fat fuck. Make what I want, you fuck. Um, yeah, and, uh, for, for the best movie of 2018, uh, that I, uh, to close it out, um, I, I debated between two, but this one's really fresh in my mind. Uh, I gotta go with Sicario Day of the Soldado. I, I really, really liked it. Um, very well made, love the script. 
Um, Benicio is so, so fucking good in it. He's always... Oh, I'm a big God. fan of Benicio. He's such a fantastic actor. And his chemistry with Josh Brolin in this movie, so fantastic. I think it's way better in the first movie. Uh, and once again, getting shit on fucking critics. SJW bullshit. Did they like the first one or no? They loved the first one because Emily Blunt was in it and Denis Villeneuve directed it. But now... Did they just take her out of the second yeah, one? Yeah, she's not in this one. Okay. Um, and I she guess, didn't really, in the grand scheme of things, she was only there because they needed she was the someone moral, from DOJ. She was the moral compass in the movie. That too. And but in the plot of the movie, yeah. they just needed her because and she was in this department or whatever. Yeah, just a lot of practical effects in the movie, this one, and just, I loved it. I really did. It was, that was fantastic. So uh, that's, um, definitely, definitely check that one out. It opened well, so I'm hoping we get a third one. Um... Was really impressed with that Sicario Day of the Soldado. Really good. Wish it was just called Soldado, but if it means it does I well. I wish it was called Dia de Soldado. Yeah. Dia de la Soldado, Dia de Soldado. If you're oh, going to have it in do... Spanish, don't do a Spanish and English sandwich is what I'm saying. If, if they're going to do that, they might as well just call it Soldado. Soldier. Yeah. That, that would have been the best. But, you know, it is what it is. That's that's the business. That's the marketing terms. And it opened to $19 million, so that's really good for that movie. And, uh... You know, so hopefully uh, we get a third one to close the trilogy. So, uh... I'm going to have real trouble with this because I see a lot of good movies. And did I, you see anything, like, without me? Not much. <laughs> not much. <laughs> I don't have much motivation to go to the movies unless it's a really good movie. Or, right. I don't know, just to do this. Yeah. Um, the best I can remember seeing is Watership Down. A very good movie about bunnies, and um, they just want to start a f their own free life with other bunnies. And of course, these evil fascist bunnies stand in their way. They have blue eyes, just like the purgers. I got nothing. <laughs> oh, well. Well, that, uh, that concludes the... A real, um, <laughs> it's a real good analogy for my YouTube career. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> and that was the end of uh, Rudy Land Mid-Year Spectacular. Tune in for our closing thoughts at the end of the year. Would the last one to leave please turn out the lights?